roles and responsibilities of the production engineer and there are a number of uh, jobs that a production engineer do as we discussed in the last lecture and i showed you lots of videos about them majority of the jobs revolve around these basic terms which is the well completion surface processing stimulation and remedial process well monitoring problems production problems enhancement and well performance now before we go ahead let review what we discussed in the last one first of all the first major challenge for the production engineer to keep to design this plumbing system to design this production system starting from this reservoir till the separator this is the job of the uh, production engineer and one of the key job here is to what size of tubing you should use here what kind of wellhead you should use here what kind of christmas tea you need to install here what kind of separator you need to install here and what kind of size of pipe you need to use here what kind of storage is are needed there so this is a major job of the production engineer and not only they have to design it but they have to maintain it and as i told you in the last lecture there are two kinds of production engineers one is at the office and one is in the and at the field the field one is doing the monitoring of the data and sending to the office and in office there is evaluation going on about them so this designing and optimizing of production system is called the well performance and uh, <clears throat> we have to look at what kind of fluid we are producing and we have to do the well performance and design the well the production system and man manage and optimize the production system this is the first job as you see here this tubing we have to design it this tubing string the size for example it could be 2 inch could be 3 inch id could be 4 inch we have to decide here tubing head then after that we have to operate it also at what pressure we are operating how much choke we should open how much flow it should be from this uh, tube so we have to as a production engineer this is our job to manage this reservoir and uh, their wells to manage these wells here reservoir management is a job of reservoir engineers and drilling is the job of drilling engineer and definitely what we do we look at the pressures we try to optimize the pressure if there is any pressure loss at at certain point we try to optimize it and minimize the pressure drop we will work on this pressure drop system in the later lectures okay then after this well productivity we have another one which is the well completion okay in well completion as i said the first job is to design the tubing string the tubing is the final pipe which we use in the well in order to produce a fluid a fluid from it this is one of the job of the production engineer that we do and uh, this is the final one which has the perforations and this final tubing we install after this pipe casing surface casing intermediate casing production casing and so on so this production casing you can say here in this case serves as a tubing also which will take the oil from this reservoir towards the surface of the well then we talked about the fracking we talked about the fracturing because there is low permeability or there is the formation damage due to drilling fluids or other fluids sometimes the stimulation is needed and uh, in order to stimulation we have two methods which is the hydraulic fracturing and acidizing we have to do that uh, in order to improve the so improve the production so this is the annual job of production engineer uh, that we have to do we will talk about each of them in much details and in, up to the advanced level we will talk about them so there are two ways of well stimulation techniques one of them is the hydraulic fracturing other one is the acid fracturing we will talk about them in much detail then the another uh, thing we discussed in the last lecture is about the workover jobs we said that there is and i showed you a camera video if you remember that uh, there was a lot of steel and wax deposition around the well and uh, there was a chance of leakage also so there is chance that a solid cut material like asphaltene is accumulated inside the pipe as you can see in this picture there is no way oil can come out all is blocked by this asphaltene solids these solids are part of the crude oil and then they can accumulate and gather together and you can say they can flocculate together and choke or clog this this pipe here and then there can be no production so this is we don't want this at this point after that the scale deposition as i showed you in the last videos that there is the camera scale deposition around the well bore this reduce the diameter so it means that let less oil will be flowing from this plate so also we have to care for it we don't want this to deposit and we clean it up using the 
scratchers or through the chemicals and so on. Then there's another problem there's from the reservoir. Sometimes you have the sand particles, small, tiny particles, sand particles. They can flow towards the surface, the surface. Now these sand particles under high pressure, they can be very, very dangerous. They can destroy the tubing, pipeline, Christmas tree, separator, everything. So sometimes we have to do the sand control. So this is another job of production engineer to manage the sand production, which is coming from the reservoir. This is another job, here it is. Now in this case, there are small uh, clay fine particles and that can produce with the, with the crude oil and they can block the perforations. And what is the perforation? Perforation is just making a hole and making a communication between the reservoir and the well bore. We will talk about the perforation also in the later chapter. Look at the effect of corrosion here. The corrosion also is a big problem. Corrosion can eat the metal surface, pipelines, and so on. So this is a job of the production engineer to manage this one. So basically production engineer deal with all those artificial pipes and uh, facilities that we install there. Not only we have to install them, design them, but we have to manage them and operate them at the same time. Okay, then we will talk about the workover techniques. What are the techniques that we need? And then of course, when the pressure declines after certain years and we cannot produce the oil naturally, then sir, we have to use the artificial lift methods. And there are so many artificial lift methods. Two of them are very famous. One of them is jet pumping. The other one is the gas lift. And uh, we have to do the artificial lift because there's no pressure in the reservoir. And now we use artificially to lift the oil from the reservoir to the surface. We will talk about them, all of them, again in much detail in, in the later chapter. So this was the introduction. Now I will go to the next chapter, which is important for today. Okay. Before we dive into the details of the production engineer and production engineering, the first thing we need to consider here is the production history. Can anyone tell me what, what do you mean by the production history? Can anyone tell me what does what do I mean by production history? When I say the word production history, what does it mean? Okay. Now production history means it means that how much oil, gas, and water is produced. Produced today, yesterday, last one month, last one year. You have different reports then. Last one year, last five years, and last 10 years. This is called the production history. You can say that, okay, we produced let's say 10,000 barrels of oil, okay. 50 million cubic feet of gas and 200 barrels per day in last one month. This is the production history, okay, of last one month. Now, what we are looking for as a production engineer, production history, and now the question, another question, can, why we need the production history? This is the most important question. Okay, now I ask you one thing. Let's make a reservoir, different kind of reservoirs. We have one reservoir here. Okay, we have one reservoir here. Here we have the gas. Here we have the water. Here we have the oil. Here we have the water. Now we have two different reservoirs, gas and water, oil and water. Now you are a production engineer. They ask you to design the surface facility. 
you drill drilling engineers came they drilled the well on both sides now my question to all of you again what will be the surface facilities based on this reservoir or based on this reservoir will it be the same or different this is a gas reservoir this is an oil reservoir okay and we definitely have the data production history of this one also of this one also now my question to all of you uh, about the surface facility will they be same or different anyone different different yes what kind of uh, surface facilities you think we should have them for them uh, both of them need separators but different kind of separators right yes definitely yes both need different separators this should be for gas and water and this should be for oil and water different separators this is the first thing now this gas first of all when you are producing the oil okay you are producing let's say 10000 barrels per day now where do you take them okay you are producing 10000 barrels per day where they should go it means that you need to make storage here tanks you have to make the tanks where you can where you can fill them with the with the oil okay these tanks are filled through this well okay now do you think that the we need the storage tanks here no because there is no oil what you will store gas cannot be stored in such tanks okay now what you do you need for gas for gas you need the gas processing plant and pipeline to transport or the lng system which we, where we liquefy the gas okay so in this case okay based on this reservoir we need the gas processing plant for example if gas has any impurity like co2 or h2s or any other we have to remove it purify the gas and send it to the company for example you are sending it to the electric power generation uh, plants like bazian so but here you don't have the storages because you don't have oil and here you are not installing the gas processing facility because you don't have gas so it means that you your surface facilities must be designed according to what is your production but yes. sir we also need a pipeline to transport the oil yes yes here it i wrote that we need pipeline to transport because what what where you will store this gas you cannot you have to send it to the customer directly through the pipelines or you just flare them burn them in the air what and what we are doing here in kurdistan at the moment because we don't have the gas processing facility and gas processing plant costs more than a billion dollar so we don't have that big facility right now so what we are doing we are just burning the gas so Which, what is lng yes lng is the liquefied natural gas uh let me write for you it's a liquefied natural gas it is a gas but what we do we cool it down under at the temperature of minus 1 degree 1 centigrade we reduce its temperature cool it down to minus and it becomes liquid and when it becomes liquid it can it can easily be transported i mean it's a gas same gas what we are talking about the gas here in a gas form as gas phase but after we cool it down to minus 161 it turns out it becomes a liquid which gas i am talking about methane okay it becomes a liquid then it is easy to transport okay if you i can show you actually this this gas
Here it is. LNG is virtually the same as the natural gas you use in your home. With two important differences. LNG is a liquid and it's cold. Very cold. 260 degrees Fahrenheit below zero to be exact. The advantage of being in a liquid state is that it takes up less space. In fact, 620 cubic feet of regular natural gas when cooled to a liquid results in no more than one cubic foot of LNG. Cold LNG vapor is also heavier than air, but as it warms, it becomes lighter than air and rises. LNG is also environmentally friendly. In the event of a spill, it evaporates quickly, it leaves behind no residue, and does not react chemically with the air. It's spilled on water, is not absorbed, and does not harm sea life or affect water quality. And since 1964, LNG has maintained the best safety record of any fossil fuel. Unless traveled within a confined space, the burning will not create an overpressure or explosion. And LNG terminals do not create confined space. Another safety feature is that LNG by itself does not burn. Vapors will burn only when mixed with air, then only with a lazy flame. A lazy flame means that LNG burns more like a candle than a blaze. This is different from other gas fuels, such as propane and gasoline, which are highly flammable. As LNG mixes with more air, the mixture becomes too late to burn. This is called the lower flammable limit. Now it's important to understand that natural gas does burn. That's why it's an efficient and versatile fuel. However, for LNG to burn, it must be in a gaseous state in combination with air or oxygen. Within its storage tanks, LNG is always maintained in a liquid form, with natural gas vapor but no air above the liquid. The tanks are also well insulated and vapor tight. This means not only can oxygen not seep in, but LNG cannot seep out. As you can see, the clean gas, uh, what we are talking here, is a clean gas, LNG. Uh, Doctor, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, what is the difference between LNG and uh, liquid, uh, liquid petroleum gas, LPG? Yeah, yeah, very good question. We have two terms. One of them is LNG. Then we have LPG. Then we have NGL. And then we have... Okay, these three are good to know for now. LNG is a methane gas, but cool, compressed. Cool and compressed. LPG is not methane, but is uh, you can propane and butane. As I told you in the previous lectures, introductory lecture, we have C1, C2, C3, C4, different hydrocarbon, starting from methane, ethane, propane, butane, hexane, heptane. So this is the higher hydrocarbon. This, this propane and butane, what here I'm talking about is, where should I? Okay, so propane, butane, and uh, this propane and butane are C3 and C4 and C1 is methane. So methane is the lightest form of hydrocarbon. The propane and butane is the third or fourth heaviest hydrocarbon. They have higher heating value and so on. So this C3 and C4 are LPG, which we burn, we use it at our home. It is already a liquid. You don't need to compress it. You don't need to cool it. It comes as a liquid and we have this propane and butane at our homes in a gas cylinder that we use for kitchen and stove. That is the propane and butane. Now this LNG is a methane, but we cool it and compress it to minus 161 degrees centigrade or to minus 260 60 degrees per hour. Both are the same, just unit are changed. Okay, so propane and butane. Then we have another term, which is the N NGL. Now this NGL is pentane C5 plus, but they are obtained from the gas processing. For example, we are processing this gas Okay, it has some liquid content. So in during the process that liquids come out of the gas and we have certain procedures that we use to remove those liquids from this gas. 
so that we can sail this gas and or use it for compression or LNG or any other purpose. We have to remove all the liquids what it has. So some of the liquids are C5 plus, which is the pentane, hexane, octane, non and decane and so on. So these, when we remove them, we call them the natural gas liquids, liquids obtained from the natural gas. And as I told you, LPG is a propane and butane, which is the higher hydrocarbon, which is C3 and C4. And uh, the methane is the first one. Now I write what are the first 10 methane, ethane, propane. So here you can, I can write first is the methane, then is the ethane, then we have propane, then we have butane, then we have pentane, hexane, octane, methane, then pentane, hexane, it is heptane, then we have hexane, then we have octane, then we have nonane, then we have decane. I remember 10, and also you should remember 10. So when I talk about the methane, compressed methane, I'm talking about, I'm talking about LNG. When I'm talking about LPG, I'm talking about propane and butane. When I'm talking about NGLs, I'm talking about the pentane and so on, others. Got the idea? We just, Thank you, sir. Yeah, I just you know, great. changed the direction of my lecture, actually. I'll change the direction of my lecture to the processing. We have a subject in energy engineering processing. It may be offered next semester. Depends. But I will prepare the syllabus now, uh, this semester and send them. It will be mainly about the refinery. Half will be refinery, half, half will be gas processing, the process engineering. OK. Now let's go ahead. I was talking the importance of production history. Production history is important because our decision as a production engineer are based on this surface facility design based on the composition of the this reservoir. As I stood that if you have the gas, you will not put the storages there. Or on the other side, if you have oil, you have to put the storages, but not the gas processing plant. So you have to look at what kind of composition we are dealing with. This is the first story. Now, the second thing is in the production history, it is important. Let me clarify all these things. We have a well here. Now we have a well which has the gas and it has the oil and it has the water. Now we have three gas, uh, three different phases here. And we are dealing mostly with, with the oil phase here. We are trying to produce the oil. But when we are producing this oil, we have to select this, the size of the separator. We have to get the separator here. Okay, now this separator here has to be designed based on the composition. Again, you need here the production history. Production history, you need it because once you know what kind of you know fluid you are producing, then you can design the separator. For example, the oil we are producing ten thousand barrels per day. So your separator should be capable to produce to process eleven thousand uh, barrels per day. Eleven k barrels per day. Okay, this should be the capacity of the separator. Now. In the production history, you know that you are, you are producing 10,000 barrels per day. You are producing 200 mm SEF gas per day. Per day. And you have the water 200 barrels per day water also. So now you this separator should must be three phase. It should be three, three phase separator because we are separating three different phases here. So separator must be designed based on the composition here. Now production history is important. For example, this is this is the status of what we are talking here, let's say in January 2019. You are just producing in January 2019, you are just producing 200 barrels per day. That's all right. But what about the January 2020? Now in January 2020, when you look at the production history, you are producing 20. 2000 barrels per day of water and uh, from 10000 it declined to 7000 barrels per day of oil and uh, 
500 mm SCF per day. Now look at the production history in January. Look at the production history in February. They are absolutely different. Now, when they are different, then your surface facility can accommodate these changes. For example, now you are producing 2,000 barrels of day per water. What you are going to do with that? This is a question. So production history plays a very major role. Okay, production history. Because as production history is changing, your reservoir is changing, whatever fluid you are composing, you have to design surface facility based on that, based on what your production is coming. Now, as a production engineer, okay, you are a production engineer. You must anticipate, means predict, or you can say simple words, predict what is coming next, next year. For example, now January 2021. January 2021, what we should expect. Okay. As a production engineer, you must predict. Now, how you will predict? How you will predict? This is the question. As I said, you must predict, you must predict the oil, gas, and water production. How you will predict? The first thing you must know, first thing you must know is the drive mechanism. Okay, you must know the fluids and what is the driving force for them to come out. We have six different types of drive mechanism and uh, these are important to predict and anticipate what is coming next. Why we want to know that? Because these situations are changing. Maybe next year, January 2021, water level may rise. This 22,000 becomes 5,000 barrels per day. So if the water level rise becomes 5,000 barrels per day, how you are going to manage that? So if it is expecting your 5,000 barrels per day and you are not prepared, you don't have facility to store water or sand this box, water where you must, you may be stopping the production. So you must anticipate. And this production decline from in one year from 10,000 to 7,000, you lost 3,000 barrels per day, just multiplied by let's say $50. So how much money you lost per day? So this is not a sign of a good engineer. This The management will ask why this production decline has occurred. You must answer. Okay, okay, it has declined, that's fine, but why? You, as a production engineer, you must answer that. And you must look at the, your production system, you know, whatever you are doing, wh whatever is, you must tell why this is happening. And what can we do to, you know, increase the production back to 10,000? Maybe we drill more wells, or maybe we just do some work over, maybe we increase the perforation. So we, we must decide. We must decide what are we going to do with that. So this is, that's why the production history is important. And production, first thing when you go in oil and gas field, first thing you go look at the production data, what production they are getting. Based on the production data, then you can analyze what is going on in the surface facility. How many storages they have, how many separators they have, what pressure they are managing, how many wells they have, what they are doing with the production, what they are doing with the gas, what they are doing with the water. These are a lot of questions. When you go on oil field, you can ask there, what is going on there? So as a production engineer, uh, first thing we need to know is the drive mechanism as we discussed. Now I will go back. I hope now I have given you enough background. So now we can discuss the drive mechanism and you understand now that what is the need of drive mechanism to discuss in this course. Any question? Here it is, the drive mechanism. This is the first thing that we should know that what are we doing? This is the production concept that we have to understand about them. What is, first of all, drive mechanism? A reservoir drive mechanism is a source of energy for driving the fluids out through the well bore. So it's a force or a pressure which is uh, asking fluid to come from that deep from the reservoir to the surface. So as you saw in the pictures that our reservoirs are usually quite deep. As you see that our reservoirs are quite deep and from the surface, maybe the distance maybe is 2000 feet or 5000 feet or even 10,000 feet. Now, why the hell this 10,000 feet deep oil will come to the surface? It needs a surface, it needs a force which drives oil from this area, from the reservoir towards the surface. We need to be careful for it. So 
So in order to do that, uh, we have drive mechanism in the reservoir. We have different kind of drive mechanism that we will talk about it. So we have six different kind of drive mechanisms: expansion of reservoir fluids, oil, gas, and water; liberation and expansion of solution gas; expansion of reservoir rock, and reduction of pore volume. And this is important because you can predict what is expected. Because if the drive mechanism, let's say, is water drive, this is depletion drive, solution gas drive, gas cap drive, we have water drive, compaction drive, gravity drainage drive, combination drive. So we have one, two, three, four, five main one, and depletion, we have two different kind of drive mechanisms here. Let's say our drive mechanism is water. Now, water is the main force which is pulling, pushing this oil to go to the surface. It means that in future, water production will increase. And what we do in this case, we look at the oil water contact, where oil and water are meeting. And I will show you one video which will clarify this oil water contact and dry mechanism. Often the hydrocarbon accumulation in a reservoir, either oil or gas, is in contact with an aquifer. That is a large volume of water saturated permeable reservoir rock. If oil is produced at a rate which is about equal to the activity of the aquifer, the water in the aquifer will replace the volume of hydrocarbons removed, and the reservoir pressure will be maintained at or near its original value. Such a reservoir is said to have an active water drive. The oil recovery efficiency of a water drive reservoir can be as low as 28% and as high as 84%. The median value is 51%. This is substantially higher than the other two natural reservoir drives. The proper management of this type of reservoir requires that the reservoir pressure be maintained either by withdrawing oil only at the rate of replacement by the aquifer or by injecting water to support the aquifer. As the invading water reaches a well and the volume of water produced with the oil increases, the well must be shut in or recompleted at a higher interval. Okay, let's watch it again. Often the hydrocarbon accumulation in a reservoir, either oil or gas, is in contact with an aquifer. That is, a large volume of water-saturated permeable reservoir rock. If oil is produced at a rate which is about equal to the activity of the aquifer, the water in the aquifer will replace the volume of hydrocarbons removed, and the reservoir pressure will be maintained at or near its... Now let me tell you what is happening here. Okay, this green, what you see is the oil. And this blue, what you see is the water. Now what water is doing, it is acting like a piston. Piston means it is pushing the oil towards the well board. Now whatever oil you are producing, water is replacing that. So it means that over time, the water production will also increase. And as you see that here, right now is here, but if I move, move the video a bit ahead, you will see this oil, water contact, here is the contact, this thin layer, this line you see, will rise. Have an active water Look at drive. this one. Now, active water drive means water level has now rised. Before it was here, now it is here. So it is happening because we are producing and this water is pushing this oil towards us and there's no free space. That's why this is the best kind of drive mechanism that we have in the world, which because the reservoir pressures are well maintained, but definitely the water production over time will increase. So you, as a production engineer, when you go at the production, okay, you look at the production history, okay, production history, last year, water was produced 200. This year, okay, water production level was 500 barrels per day. Oh, so it, they have water drive mechanism. Simply, you can look at the water production data, water level is increasing. So now production decline. If you are smart, you will directly go and find out their test, what they have done, where is the oil water contact at the moment? Where are the perforation levels at the moment? And then probably you will plan a workover, put your perforation bit at the ahead from away from the water and you just produce oil. Or the second thing you need to do is to plan for this water handling. If that much water we are producing, the water production may increase next year more, then what you are going to do is water in the future. So this production history tells you that, okay, there's a big chance of water drive and uh, water production may increase, the pressure is maintained. So when we talk about the production history, it's not only the oil, gas, and water, also at the same time, the pressure and temperature. 
Look at the pressure. What was the pressure in January 2019? What was the pressure in January 2020? Pressure is the same, but water production has increased. It is a clear sign that the reservoir you are dealing has the oil plus the water, and there is no gas production still. And in the future, there is a chance that water level will rise more. And as a production engineer, you plan ahead for that. Plan ahead. You do your studies. You look at the data. You do whatever, but try to minimize that water production and this is if you work as a production engineer in kurdistan this is right now kurdistan is facing a massive problem of water production here in kurdistan right now most of the reservoirs are water drive water production has increased and they don't know what to do because they are not there educated what to do with that so maybe if in your master study you can work on this kind of topic in future now let's go ahead and look some other uh, there's types of gas in the gas reservoir is usually a matter of simple gas expansion, sometimes assisted by water influx. Production rates fall as the reservoir pressure drops in response to depletion. Recovery is if you have this kind of reservoir, let's say if you compare from January 19 to January 20, you will see definitely a pressure losses. If the pressure was 2000 psi in 2019, pressure will be 1700 or 1600 psi in 2020. The pressure will decline over time because it is not that powerful as water. Generally very good, particularly if the bottom hole flowing pressure can be reduced to a minimum by lowering the back pressure at the wellhead with compressors. In such cases, recovery can be as high as 85 to 90%. As we mentioned earlier, the production of gas condensate reservoirs can result in the retrograde condensation of liquids in the reservoir as pressure drops. Maintaining reservoir pressure in this case can be critical in maximizing liquid recovery at the surface. Injecting dry gas and producing it along with condensed liquids called gas cycling is a method of increasing recovery. A gas cap will be present now, in a red. This is the third kind of it. It has the gas, there's oil, green one, and there's the cap of gas ahead. Now this gas is trying to push down when we are producing. It is one of the drive mechanism, but not the, as powerful as water. of discovery. The larger the gas cap volume relative to the oil volume, the more effective the gas cap will be in maintaining pressure. As oil is produced from the oil zone, the gas cap expands. As it moves downward and invades the producing oil zone, wells will begin to produce increasing amounts of gas and ultimately only gas. The oil recovery efficiency of a gas cap invades the producing oil zone, wells will begin to... Now Imagine this kind of drive mechanism you are dealing with, and you are a production engineer and you identify, okay, probably we have a gas cap because, we, and again, you will look at the production history, how the gas is behaving, gas is increasing or not at the surface, or if there's any water, okay, there's no water, there's only gas, there's only, and gas is increasing over time. It means there's a big chance you have the gas cap. Now, if the gas is in, in increasing at the surface, what you are going to do with that gas, okay. You must manage it. Either you flare it or you manage it. So that's called the production management. You have to manage your production and reservoir is always dynamic. The oil water contact or gas water contacts are always changing. And you must manage what you are doing at the surface for them. Produce increasing amounts of gas and ultimately only gas. And ultimately the only gas. Means gas that cap. ultimately in this kind of situation, ultimately you will lose all the oil gas. production. And all you will produce is gas. Now, if you don't have any processing facility, you have to stop the well, shut the well and go, because there's no more oil you are producing. Or you look at the data again, you have to do the logging and so many other techniques, and you have to find out what's going on there. The oil recovery efficiency of a gas cap drive is in the range of 15% to 60%, with a median value of 33%. The efficient management of a gas cap drive reservoir requires that the producing intervals of the oil wells be located so that the expanding gas cap will not reach them until the maximum amount of oil has been produced. The natural gas dissolved in oil is the source of energy for a solution gas. Now, this is another kind of drive mechanism called in solution gas. Solution gas is the gas which is mixed inside the gas, uh, inside the oil. And after... As oil is produced, we reach the bubble point and the gas will come out of solution. The reservoir pressure drops. Once the bubble point pressure is reached, the 
natural gas dissolved in the oil will come out of solution and form bubbles, which expand as the fluid pressure is reduced further. The expanding bubbles continue to support production until they reach a critical saturation. The saturation where they join together and begin to flow as a single gas phase. Now the gas phase, because of its much lower viscosity, begins to flow to the well more, much more rapidly than the oil. More and more free gas is produced with the crude oil. This causes the reservoir pressure to drop, and this finite energy source is rapidly depleted. Ultimately, the well ceases to flow. The range of oil recovery expressed as a percentage of the original oil in place is generally between 12% and 37%, with a median value of 20%. In effect, this means that on average, we will leave 80% of the oil in the reservoir. 80% of oil is left in the reservoir. Production is only 20%. So here comes the job of enhanced oil recovery methods, where you have to produce this oil artificially. It's certainly not very efficient. The proper management of this type of drive requires that we maintain the reservoir pressure above that of the critical gas saturation as long as possible often by injecting a less expensive fluid into the reservoir to replace the hydrocarbons being recovered. Now, I'm, I know that I'm going a bit faster in them, but we have a complete lecture on it. In the next lecture, we will continue discussing this thing here. Our objective is to estimate the fractional amount of the original oil in place that is ultimately recovered as we inject fluids into injection wells and recover oil from production wells. This fractional amount is the recovery efficiency and has three components. The aerial sweep efficiency, E sub AS, that is the fractional area of the reservoir that is contacted by the displacing fluid. The vertical sweep efficiency, E sub VS, the fraction of the reservoir's vertical cross section that is contacted by the displacing fluid. And the displacement efficiency, E sub V. The this is here we are talking about the reservoir engineering calculations and we will discuss them in the course of production amount of oil contacted that is actually displaced to a production well the product of aerial and vertical sweep oh, yeah. let me check the third variable controlling sweep efficiency is the permeability distribution especially aerial and vertical variations in permeability natural fractures or permeability streaks will cause the displacing fluid to finger through the reservoir, bypassing quantities of oil, yielding a low sweep efficiency. We now understand the three variables that control sweep efficiency. But what about displacement efficiency? Isn't it enough just to get the displacing fluid? To this is the another subject right now. It's not our topic, so I will stop it here and go back to our drive mechanisms. Okay. We are discussing the drive mechanisms, and uh, we said that there are five different kind of drive mechanism. Which one of them is the gas drive one, depletion drive. Two different type of depletion drive we have: solution gas and the gas cap drive. We have the water drive. We have the compaction drive. We have the gravity drainage drive, or we have the combination of any of these two. The combination is basically the uh, the mixture of any of two of them. We must, as a production engineer, we must look at what kind of drive mechanism we are dealing with, because based on that, our production strategy will be depending on them. Okay, let's look at the first of all depletion drive uh, hydrocarbon. In the depletion drive, we are just dealing with the with the gas and oil. This water is not in contact with the supporting aquifer. Hydrocarbons are not in contact with the supporting aquifer. Aquifer is the word we use for water in the reservoir. Okay, if the water hydrocarbons has the water below them we call that water pool is as an aquifer that's the definition of an aquifer okay now when we are talking about here we are talking about in depletion drive only the gas and oil okay in what is happening okay depletion drive means that either we have the gas cap which is pushing the pressure or there is a solution gas which is mixed with the oil and above below the bubble point it comes out and creates a pressure for oil to come then we have the water drive water drive as i showed you that it is if there's any picture there's the water drive here water this one is supporting pushing this oil this brown one on ahead this is the expansion of the water aquifer which is supporting this 
oil. And this is the best kind of uh, dry mechanism we have to produce the oil and gas. This is the active vacuum which is going ahead at the top. Okay. And here the concern definitely is how much is the size of this equipment than this one. If it is big one, then pressure will always be maintained. And uh, usually the water drives are good candidates of reservoir. Okay. Then we have another one, which has the, if you have a leak like Dukan or any sea nearby, there's a seepage or connection between that leak or with the reservoir. So water flows and supports the oil to come up to the surface. Okay. So this is another kind of water drive. There are cases, there are some cases where this kind of situation happens when the lake, nearby lakes are connected uh, with, the, with the nearby reservoirs. So this is another kind of water drive reservoirs. Here again, mobility means how easily it can flow from the lake towards the oil uh, reservoir and so on. Then we have the compaction drive, means overburden pressure. Maybe the formations are not too consolidated or hardened there. The above formations are putting a lot of pressure down, making pore space smaller and volume to you know, compress. That is causing the pressure. So it is compacting the, the oil. This is not a common drive mechanism, not easily available, but there are a few uh, reservoirs around the world which, are, which have the compaction drive. Then we have, this is the uh, offshore, this one, is a very famous uh, compaction drive reservoir model. Eco phase where compaction drive is done. Compaction means you are there's an overburden pressure on them. Then we have the gravity drainage because of the gravity, because of the gravity effect, the oil try to move downwards, and when oil try to move downwards, it creates a pressure. So gravity basically plays a role here, and you can see here gas oil contact is here in the next one. one. And in Venezuela, we have this kind of reservoir where the drive mechanism is the gravity drainage one, where the gravity plays a role for producing the oil. Then we have the depletion drive. Uh, we talk about the solution gas and this one. Okay, now here we stop it. We will discuss the phase behavior of each one. We discussed the phase behavior previously also. Now we will discuss the phase behavior of each of the drive mechanism. Okay, here is the drive solution gas drive phase behavior. Here is the, if you look at ahead, we have depletion drive. There are lots of nice uh, videos. Gas cap, this is the gas cap. There are a lot of graphs that we will discuss. So we will discuss in the next lecture. We stop it here today because what we have discussed, is we need to think on that before we jump into the, all of these details. So we will stop it here and we will continue in the next lecture for that. So any questions? Anyone has any question? No, sir, thank you. Okay, so we finish it here, this one, and uh, we will continue in the next lecture. I will upload them also and let's see how we go. And I'll put the uh, one of the presentation too for this subject also, maybe next week we do that. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you.